applying the redundancy principle is chapter 7 in the book. Um, this slide deck will uh, address that principle, uh, cover these learning objectives. This slide deck also has a review of the first four learning principles, uh, but I'm going to do the audio recording separately of that so you can look for that separately. In this one, uh, uh, we're striving to, to get you rolling on these learning objectives. You should uh, be learning to describe the redundancy principle and why it's effective for learning. Uh, learn, you should be learning to recognize when the redundancy principle has been violated and when has it been applied, attending to the uh, sort of tricky borderline cases where, uh, um, where it might seem like the redundancy principle is being applied well or being violated but in fact. So here are our six uh, media element principles. We've, we've done multimedia, contiguity, and modality. We're going to do redundancy now and then we'll come back to do coherence and personalization. So here's the prediction question for you, which is better for student learning. Uh, when words as narration and identical text are presented in the presence of corresponding graphics, or when words as narration, as narration, so narration is presented in the presence of corresponding text, but without the identical text. So as an example, you can uh, have lightning process, uh, um, the lightning process be illustrated along with narration and the identical text is or is not also on the screen. When it is on the screen, that's A. Um, um, you have three things going on. When it is not on the screen, you've got two things going on. Uh, so let me illustrate that. Uh, when the text is on the screen, it's right here. Um, you have the graphics, you have the text, and then you have the audio narration. You can't see that, but you would hear that if this were a multimedia uh, um, uh, a display uh, uh, interactive. Um, here, uh, the graphics is there, uh, but there is no text on the screen, right? That's the different part. Um, and there is just this audio uh, uh, being uh, spoken aloud over the top of the graphics. So which do you think is going to be better? Uh, well, the results suggest that the spoken narration alone without the identical text is better. Why is that? Uh, again, it goes to uh, cognitive processing limitations and, and these channels. We use separate channels for processing verbal and pictorial materials, but each channel is limited. Thus, adding text can uh, often overload the visual channel. Uh, so uh, that can be illustrated in another version of the diagram of a diagram that you should be familiar with. Um, it's a little variation on, on some of the ordering and labeling. Um, this time the eyes are on the top and the ears are on the bottom, but otherwise uh, um, this sensory component is similar. And we have in the case of uh, uh, um, the condition when the printed words are presented, the animation, printed words, and narration, right? Um, and the animation and printed words have to both be processed by the eyes and then stored in the visual component, uh, whereas the narration is uh, processed by the ears and stored in the auditory component. Uh, I actually prefer this labeling auditory. Um, I think the last one said phonetic. Um, but there may be sounds that aren't uh, phonemes or parts of words, so I think auditory is better, by the way. But the key point is, this is the overload, right? And if you get rid of the printed words, then, then the overload goes away. Um, you might be asking yourself, well, why not get rid of this one? Well, the, the, then we're not talking about multimedia, right? Multimedia is how the verbal information and, and some kind of visual work together. Uh, and so uh, um, there may well be interesting questions about whether if it's just words you should have both, but uh, the research has suggested uh, if there are such differences, they're reasonably nuanced uh, uh, when there isn't an animation and, and you vary whether the words are on the screen or not. In fact, I think in that case, uh, as I mentioned before, the printed words do have this advantage that they allow for learner control and pacing. Uh, so there certainly are exceptions to the uh, redundancy uh, uh, principle. Um, uh, you might consider using some on screen text as I 
that's mentioned when there are no pictorial presentations. Um, uh, and again, this is important to, to note that, that this is not the case where redundancy really applies because redundancy is about the pictorial presentation. The learner has ample time to process the pictures and words. It could be presented sequentially, the, or the present presentation space is sufficiently slow. This has its do own downside, of course, because now you're slowing down the learning process, potentially, uh, or the t making students spend more time. The learner is likely to have difficulty processing spoken words, and so this is the case where, um, for second language learners, the audio may not have the same advantage that it does for first language learners, uh, but, but in also other cases where uh, um, there are a lot of uh, technical ter terms that might be better processed. Uh, highlighting a few keywords next to corresponding parts of graphics is, is, is a reasonable thing to do. Um, so uh, uh, here's a case of you know, pictorial presentation. Here's a case where a few keywords are being highlighted, right? Um, and, and the audio over it, it's many more words. So um, this is a good example of, of applying the, the redundancy principle because we're avoiding putting this whole text on the screen. Uh, but it is okay to put a few uh, verbal cues um, uh, on the screen, especially to highlight um, you know, new technical terms like discharge valve in this particular case. Uh, there are psychological reasons for these exceptions. When on-screen text does not uh, add to learners' processing demands, then, then, it, then it, it's not as big of a risk. It doesn't overload. When this Spoken narration is particularly hard, then seeing and hearing the words can provide a benefit. And particularly, this comes up with technical subjects with lots of jargon and, and with foreign language learning. Uh, but again, that it may be that the limited use of on-screen text uh, uh, and, uh, with, with more elaboration and audio is the better way to go. So uh, that's uh, the... Uh, Redundancy principle, see the next audio uh, um, link on the slides for uh, this review component.